Alex Answer here, March 4th, 2017. I was asked recently in the comment section how long I think we have in this country before things start getting crazy. I'm going to talk about my forecast and echo my warnings, but it's important to be accurately informed in a world of so much disinformation. I mean, you got to be able to see the bat coming from around the desk and be able to intercept it either beforehand or after the fact. And see, people can be all positive and everything, but the fact of the matter is, let's just say you're playing uh, street baseball and you hit a home run and you're playing in the streets of Philly or some city and it goes over the gate or the fence and it's going into the neighborhood. You can think positive thoughts but there's a pretty strong possibility there's going to be some damage. Once the ball is already in motion, it is what it is. What goes up must come down. So when we lock in to this truth that the United States has been set up to not be able to pay back what it owes China, there's already a number of people talking about a sovereign debt collapse. And it was back in 2009, 2010, that RT, which has promoted their own block of the New World Order, they're not so independent. You had people coming on talking about the breakup of the United States into, say, six regions. And now we have conversations like CalExit on the table. And on one level, it looks good, right? The idea of, of, of states and groups of states seceding from the nation. However, a lot of people that are, you know, in a sense of euphoria over this concept <clears throat> aren't even looking at the foreign influence that's going to come to these regions. In fact, it already is. I've reported for years about Chinese officials visiting the United States and dropping massive amounts of money in local officials' laps. And then we have Congress doing nothing to intervene or investigate. We have people close to Donald Trump that have had direct dealings with the Chinese, like Rick Perry, when he brought Huawei, the Chinese cell phone company, which members of a Homeland Security Committee a few years ago were concerned about espionage on the part of China. And so as you see criticism rise of Donald Trump from China and the Chinese, for those that have been programmed into this, anybody that doesn't support Donald Trump, whether they be Americans or not, fuck them. Fuck them in the ear. Fuck them in the other ear, Vinny. Fuck those. I've seen the comments. I post quite a bit of news. Some of you know that at my associate's website. I see how people are commenting that are in the pro-Trump camp with regards to the people of China. See, a few years ago, people would think twice about calling for a conflict or, or a war or saying, fuck them, let's, let's default on the national debt, let's have a reset. And so the potential for a reset segueing to war is very real. But this, this fake news dystopia of the deep state being against Donald Trump and Donald Trump being some kind of an angel, this is like the biggest conspiracy theory okay, of our lifetimes. That this man is some sort of a angelic being, ascended master, sent from God, an embodiment of Jesus. And then you see people like Alex Jones saying they would die for Donald Trump. I think that we have three years during this solar minimum to get prepared. And you need to Consider what that means for you. If it's off the grid, understand what's going on with the war and off the grid living. That a lot of areas that were available are not going to be available. And then you have some of the areas that are available, Costia County, where they change their land use codes. So it's not currently available to live off the grid. But that doesn't mean that some of you can't invest in certain off grid properties that you plan to use later during an emergency. Are code enforcers really going to have the manpower to enforce these? unconstitutional land use codes. For years I've also been projecting that if 
we get to that level, and I pray that I'm wrong. I'd like to be wrong. I'd rather be wrong about my projection that we're going to have this conflict. And by the way, it is, um, it is a controlled conflict. And in this scenario, like 9-11, I see our defenses coming down. And that being allowed from within the inner levels of our, of our country. For years, you also know that foreign troops have been training in the United States, and they've trained certain troops from certain countries in certain regions of the United States. So in 2012, we had a drill with multiple countries. I believe the initial report was like 90-something, but that was from the NATO's YouTube channel. So those were primarily Latin American countries that were in Tampa Bay, Florida, just a few months before the RNC, and they're kicking in doors. They're rescuing the mayor from a terror attack. You have... All this mayhem going on, but it's literally a, a direct invasion, if you will, on the part of foreign troops in Tampa Bay, Florida. We look also, same year 2012, Russian Special Forces training in Colorado with U.S. troops. What were they training for? Domestic terrorism operations? We look at League City, Texas, and there is a report you can find. I'm the only one in the alternative media who's covered it. Chinese police training with League City police. So it's not necessarily a martial law drill. They're coming over. It's a, it's a foreign police exchange program. Meanwhile, the chief of police in League City, Texas, goes to China to learn more about their tactics. In 2008, I reported that at Mount Home Air Force Base in Idaho, the same state in which the former governor, Butch Otter, proposed leasing a large chunk of Idaho, uh, an old airport, to the nation of China. People freaked out about it. I don't believe the plan moved forward. That's the important aspect of discussing these things. But at Mount Home Air Force Base in Idaho, the Singaporean Air Force, which has ties to China, as well as ties to the United States, isn't that interesting? And we need to look further at that. They've been training, flying F-16s, other aircraft in Idaho, and also training live fire in Nevada. In 2007, in Portland, Oregon, I covered Top Off 4. Uh, a dirty bomb, terror drill, or Homeland Security brings Portland's emergency response resources, also regional counties, the state of Oregon. And in the drill, former Governor Kulongoski, something happens to him. And he says in a video documented, fortunately, on Willamette Week's YouTube channel, uh, something is going to happen to me, says the former governor. I'm going to fall into a trap. They say the only thing that I have to worry about is when I, they put the little plastic gloves on. I'll never forget the expression on former mayor of Portland, Sam Adams' face, when in April 2010, I talked about my concerns about the future of Portland with so many tear drills going on. And black helicopters... Navy Special Warfare Unit in 2007, in August, typed in black helicopters over Portland. And at that time, there was a lot of concern about a war with Iran. Residents in Portland were concerned that we already were at war, that we were being invaded, that martial law was underway, but it was only in a drill. We were being prepped. But as 2007, as that drill was going on in Portland, Top Off 4, short for top officials, there was another drill called Vigilant Shield. That was a war game exercise in aerospace, and all these years the Navy has been training out off the Pacific. Now this is interesting because it was in 2007, 8 and 9, or rather 2011, after Fukushima, that I spoke with a man by the name of Leon Lagant. He's the only guest that I've ever had on the show. Outside the Box. And Outside the Box, for those that don't know, was a live show that used to broadcast for nearly a decade in Portland, Oregon. Now I'm solely doing YouTube and the on-demand channel. Since he was 12, or 10 rather, he started having reoccurring dreams of this country being attacked. And Putin playing a role. A globalist role, but a populist role. And he was leading armies throughout the United States. Not so much him personally, but he was ordering an attack or a counterattack on the United States, according to Leon's dream. It came as a surprise, the attack on the United States. And while he wasn't super specific with regards to EMP or other forms 
of weaponry. Of course, there are uh, things like neutron bombs and you know things that will keep the infrastructure intact while causing devastation. And then, of course, there is the rise of the EMP concern. See, all this stuff followed my interview with Leon. And so we were talking about the possibility of going to war with the U.S., going to war with China and Russia. One of the things that Leon saw intuitively was that it would come at a point where the U.S. was very unpopular worldwide because of its actions. There wasn't any specifications to a year or a president, but the reason I came up with the timeline for the post-2020s has its basis in what I believe to be logic and reason as well as intuition as well as pattern recognition. It was in that period of 2008, 9, and 10 that I learned a lot more about the solar cycles and periods of war and peace. Burl Payne's written about it. Alexander Chavinsky uh, discovered the patterns in 1918. He actually did time for nearly a decade when the oligarchs of old Russia, Soviet Union, were upset with his contrarian views as to influences behind the Russian Revolution. His research survived, and to this day, he is featured on a commemorative coin in Russia, but the greater knowledge and wisdom concerning this revelation, solar maximum, more wars, revolutions, major changes on the planet, solar minimum, less of that activity, and a constant up and down, up and down. We're coming out of a solar maximum period, we're now in solar minimum, despite the recent geomagnetic storm. There's going to be solar flares. There's going to be geomagnetic storms. But we are now in a solar minimum. We see weather changes. We see changes in society. It is the quiet before the storm as a result. You can also look up Sunspots and Activist Strategy by Carol Moore and investigate the knowledge on her websites. There's definitely not a coincidence why we see the biggest protests. And the greatest displays of civil unrest, whether it be mindful or unmindful, controlled chaos. And the powers that be know this, including the Federal Reserve. Type in Federal Reserve study on solar flare impact on the market. Stock traders making impulsive decisions because of how they are biologically impacted by the solar cycles. Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, 2011. You'll find the article on Reuters. So they're planning for something after the 2020s. And on a logic and reason level, you can see where North Korea has announced they're going to be, where China is going to be with their aircraft carriers, how much more in debt the United States is going to be, and the damage that Donald Trump is going to do to the reputation of the United States, as well as the other conspiracies that exist regarding um, such and such gate, the Obama administration, his crimes, as well as Hillary Clinton. It's really the same U.S. system. And they'll come around in time and make a case against the United States, just as Leon predicted. And if the United States nukes a country, kills a million people, there will be a world coalition that will be formed, but it's already been in development. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization. If you look back at the history of the SEO, the Russia-China War Games kicked off around 2000, 2001. There were already agreements, there were already alliances, but the joint war games where they fused their troops and forces together, a number of different scenarios, different types of tanks, aircraft, storming beachfronts, you know, uh, parachuting. See, these are all signs of not just simply defensive action, but offensive action that they will say is defensive in regards to what the United States is doing. Meanwhile, we see now the encroachment upon the Middle East by Russia and China, who are no friends to the people of the Middle East. They have their own blood on their hands. Do you know that China is operating with the Afghani police now? China is in Afghanistan. You know they have a history of invading Afghanistan. So do the Russians. And so if Donald Trump was going to drain the swamp, he wouldn't appoint members to his cabinet that want to maintain the status quo. Okay, you would see Donald Trump reversing previous policies with NATO and pulling U.S. troops out of the Middle East and out of Eastern European countries that are bordering Russia. Instead, you're seeing an uptick in troops in the Middle East and troops on Russia's border. 
And so as I've projected before, this whole thing about them being friends, there's a reality behind it, but it's not what you think. They all have their script on how this war is going to go down. And that's how, on a deeper level, but you won't see that, the Bilderberg Group discussed, as they get you to focus over here, the real secret means and phone calls have not been made public. Okay, C-SPAN's not there. Okay, It's not being written about in Reuters. And so there's another level of cooperation between these world nations to where they have controlled wars and proxy wars. The Middle East is a perfect example of how the Russians and the U.S. have tested new weapons, have destabilized countries, Syria and Afghanistan. And you wonder why there's no solution, why radical terrorism keeps increasing, at least so it seems on paper. They just can't seem to take out ISIS, which is their own creation. And then people come out and say, we created ISIS, so let's have a war on all these people and call them all terrorists. But hey, CIA created ISIS. You have incompatible belief systems. You have cognitive impairment in the research community. While people continue to repeat, repeat, establishment hates Trump. Establishment hates Trump. Establishment hates Trump. They're going after all the people that are pro-Trump. Well, it looks to me that their Google AdSense isn't doing so bad. But with regards to demonetization on YouTube, and people having less views. This is happening across the board. So I think that we're going to see a YouTube, Google uh, doomsday. I think things are going to go black. I think you need to have your backup uh, channels or have your channel backed up. I think people need to be going in, a, in, a, in, a, in another direction. See, we have Obama signing off the Internet. Have we heard anything from Donald Trump about reversing some of those policies? And then here we have the ultimate pipe dream Stoners for Trump, right? So-called free spirits for Trump, anti-establishment folks for Trump. Jeff Sessions, telegraphing, domestic war on drugs increase, increased domestic investment in private prisons. They're going to go a war on recreational pot. They just declared it. And so creating turmoil from within manufactured civil unrest, as much racial tension as they can muster before World War III. I'll also remind you about Barack Obama and the federal government not changing their policy with regards to medical marijuana. They just, recreational as well, they just never went after the growers. All this was just pass forward, sign, pass forward, just like Obama doing nothing about George W. Bush's Patriot Act. And so they create this whole, oh, Trump's trying to do something about Obamacare. And they got all these other issues, though. Oh, nothing quiet in the Fed. It's all a show. In addition, if someone tries to get a firearm who is on the medical marijuana plan, they will find themselves blacklisted. And this is news and revelation that came out during the Obama administration. Isn't that interesting? Legalize, 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 legalize. And then these states are set up for federal invasion, an expansion of the drug war. And then people losing their Second Amendment if they have a medical marijuana card. I think Trump's going to spend a lot of money. I think like in that Simpsons episode where you see like the Homer car, you know, that type of a thing, but it's really a lemon. And then all of a sudden on cue, you have Elon Musk in the White House and the Tesla car. Now, with regards to Elon Musk, you have this leap to space. They've been talking about it left and right like crazy the last couple of years. And now it's like one of the top stories. Man to go to the moon. Return to moon, allegedly, if we ever went there, and more people rightfully so asking, did we ever go to the moon? What's the evidence? And man on Mars. We have a Chinese program, a Russian program. We have the Joint International Space Station. And so we can see cooperation close, cooperation in space, while they script a war amongst the people on the ground. Again, I hope that I'm wrong about many of my projections, but people say, well, they're never going to do that. That's mutual assured destruction, MAD. Well, what about the depopulation agenda? So I think that we're going to see some serious, the, the beginning of conflict by 2020. It may not happen when Trump, I'm not guaranteeing that, he will help take us there. 
He may be out in 2020 and hand the new selection a war that has already begun. Policies that, that will not or cannot be reversed, economic damage, these things will occur from this point onward. We're already in 20 trillion debt. Okay. Talking about expansion of war in the Middle East, how are we going to fund this? $54 billion allocation for the military industrial complex. I'm not surprised at all. But I also believe you're going to see people apologize for Trump, apologize for Trump. There's going to be certain people, though, they are going to break outside that spell. And for the sake of someone's soul, you want to break outside that spell of worshiping any politician, local, state, federal, world. That is not where God is. That is within. Survival preparation isn't necessarily digging your bunker all the way in the ground. Sometimes those that are digging the deepest bunkers are that much more concerned about their own karma. Do not overlook the reality of doing good deeds for others. See, there's a lot of negative karma that Americans have been convinced to accrue for themselves without realizing that they're doing it. Convinced this is the way. Speak ill of others. Bear false witness against your neighbor. To say that in a metaphoric sense, people from around the world, they're tears, tears, not realizing how they've been doing that to us. Now, we don't like it if we're independent thinkers. They put out that meme, conspiracy theories radicalizing domestic terrorism. A genuine conspiracy theorist, by the way, in my opinion, sees the race war game and program and steps away from it and tries to, if they're a truth teller, bring the awareness of others up to where they can see how they're being played, how they can see how everybody's played, how they can see the Facebook fake news algorithm trying to pump people up. Well, this is happening to your people by this people. Boom, 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 and then the people don't even see the pattern. So the negativity that's been accrued in some of these cities, the negativity that some of these people have accrued with regards to their immorality and their own personal life and things they've done to others, people have been conditioned. It's a doggy dog world. We talk about sex slavery. It's already happening in Europe. It's already happened in the Middle East. And I projected years ago we'd see an increase in attempted human abductions in Portland. And shortly after that, by a few years, Portland was named number one in child sex trafficking, the same city that in the 1800s was Shanghai Central. So you look at weak, vulnerable places in the United States. We start with the West Coast, Vancouver to Seattle to Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego. These are all targets. Dallas, Texas, Oklahoma City, Denver, Colorado, Phoenix, Arizona. We have Miami over here. And then we have New York City, we have Philadelphia, and other areas I haven't even mentioned. All potential targets. The immediate concern is a Muslim false flag, but as far as a military target, when you look at the West Coast of the United States, you see a concentration of human beings that live there. By the way, side conversation, more and more trolls that don't like the leftists calling for Portland to be nuked, uh, calling for horrible things to happen to the leftists in these areas. That's a new development. Now, Leon, in his dream, and you can type in, watch the full thing, man has dream about Chinese-Russian invasion. He talks about the West Coast being invaded primarily by the Chinese and the Russians taking the East Coast. And my suspicion is something is going to build that's going to lead to this type of world military coalition that's going to respond to the United States. But the inner levels of our government, they're going to allow the EMP or the attack, and they're going to pour in on the Chinese troop level and possibly through Mexico with the Chinese-Mexican cooperation. The stories you've heard about Chinese troops at the Mexico border are false. Disinformation specialists have taken foreign troop stories and they have spun them to where if someone actually starts looking up the history of some of the stuff, they're going to need to know that there's disinformation out there that has no basis in fact. What would be the purpose? of people calling it 10 years earlier, 20 years earlier, the invasion, the invasion, the invasion. What would be the purpose of crying wolf? What's the story about crying wolf all about? What's the lesson behind it? And so we see a manufactured threat 
The, the Islamic invasion. Rape, woman. Woman. Woman under, under threat from the hordes. And I talk about, well, well what if the infrastructure is taken out? We talk about massive gender divide. Everybody on their little cell phone. Cell phones go black. You have all these women that are basically unprotected, living their little lives in their apartments. They don't have food. They don't have stuff to really shelter in. 99% of them aren't prepared. They would be going out in the streets, getting in the line somewhere, or doing other desperate things. We, we see how prostitution and the, the concept of that has become normalized within our society. And you think about where this could go. In a, in a country that has been highly sexualized, they made pornography very available to young children. And as I've mentioned, there are more women involved in the porno industry than putting out truth outside the left-right paradigm and abstaining from blocking traffic and things of that nature. And so I can see how women are afraid to step outside the box and step into their, their truth. And I can see how certain New Age beliefs, oh, oh, that's negative. If you think about it, it might happen. Well, the reality is... A bat is a bat. And you need to be aware enough to realize when that bat is coming from under the desk and be able to intercept it ahead of time or let it pass and counter. Okay. It's like, oh, someone has a, a, a toothache. Oh, it, somebody might need a root canal or some dental work. Sure, positive thoughts are important. But certain things need to be remedied. What have we done to fix the national debt? What has the current president of the United States done to calm the nerves of the world? And then you look at that story of the person, the man from East India, and his friend being killed in Kansas, freaking out the nation of India. And then we saw, you know, some attacks on Mike Adams after that. And then we saw some other things ad rolls pulling out of Alex Jones, where th that's really causing a lot of fear in the alternative media. There's a lot of fear going around everywhere. And when you see, whether you agree with it or not, so much concern about white nationalism in the United States, because there are enough trolls and there are enough Trump supporters, even if you're a Trump supporter, and you don't have those beliefs. Enough do. Enough do have those beliefs about white genocide, white nationalism, too many minorities in the country. And the world is looking at this. If there's some sort of a roundup, detainment, if there's some sort of a humanitarian crisis for Donald Trump, whether it be in this country or somewhere else, puts those people in a camp, they will use that against us. And one weapon of war that's often used is rape. So if we're ever invaded, we are not a country that has a strong enough Second Amendment because we have a lot of felons in this country that can't legally own firearms. That is a, that is a security issue with so many people that have um, been inserted uh, into the, um, the so-called criminal justice program. We have the gender warfare program where a lot of men don't trust women and a lot of women don't trust men now. It seems by design that we have ended up at this particular place. We have infrastructure collapse, roads, bridges, a threat of a major earthquake. It's long overdue in Portland, Oregon. The next one they believe will be well above 9.0. Trump's mad at Portland and Oregon because of their stance on immigration. And so a lot of money that is needed for basic infrastructure programs isn't going to be there. And so the potential for a sovereign debt collapse, defaulting on the debt is very real. With the spending that we're seeing, we're not seeing enough jobs in reality, despite the, the matrix version of events that exists. And then we're also at risk of losing half the jobs to robots in the next decade. So I suspect that they're going to have a controlled war and occupation within this country for a few years. Certain people will be targeted. Certain regions will be incredibly unsafe. 
Of course, the biggest cities in this nation to start with, wherever they are. Uh, which is why if someone is able to get out of those situations, to get out of the cage, if you will, get out of the red zone, no pun intended, they should be looking at regions and areas to, to truly strategically relocate. You can look at Joel Skousen's book for tips. You can look at the success stories of others that are doing off-grid videos in different places in America. You can find out what state you're in, what the best places in your region for relocating. Okay, everybody coming to Colorado is in a solution. Especially coming to Colorado thinking they're going to get rich growing marijuana. Yeah, and the federal government is looking real closely. So they can have a controlled war, and then the controlled chaos, disappearing women, and then come back with a world government to end the great war of all the wars. And it's going to be in this period after 2025, leading up to 2030, that I think we're going to see more of the transhumanistic agenda, the self-driving cars. I hope that all this is just a fantasy nightmare, uh, the visions of Leon Lagat, but he also said that China would bring the microchip. And I think that it's, um, it's incredibly short-sighted for people to not be open to that possibility. And then you also need to look a little closer at where these human trafficking victims might end up. When we have th this world elite talking about going off to space, they haven't proven that they've made it there, but they're talking about going somewhere. I'm thinking off-world base. That may not be on the moon or Mars. But then again, it's possible they've been going to the moon and that they have had a cloning operation for some time. So I'm concerned for, for women of certain bloodlines because at the end of the day, this is a non-human agenda. This is a non-human program to co-opt all the major super state nations and the United States, Israel, the UK, other nations in Europe have helped arm the world by providing them with this technology. This wasn't done by a few greedy old men. This is a cold, carefully crafted design. Then there's that bit from Bill Hicks. Pick up the gun. I don't want any trouble, mister. I just want to get back to my family and buy some liquid whips at the store. Pick up the gun. The guy goes for the gun. Boom, 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 boom. We've seen it with radical Islam. They funded certain groups, got them to a certain level, had them take over territories and then blast away, but they're never able to take them out. Just keep funding them and the Taliban, Al-Qaeda and ISIS, formerly known as ISIL under the Obama administration. And now the White House is saying that military action is on the table as a possibility with regards to North Korea upping the nuclear arsenal, saying if we're going to have them, might as well use them. America destroyed by design, using every single one of these presidents that we've seen in, in, for the most of our lifetime without any exception. But in recent history, from Bill Clinton and technology transfers to China, oh, Monica Lewinsky, distraction, George W. Bush vacationing with Putin behind closed doors, same thing with Obama, if you paid attention. Friendly conversations, handshakes, flying the Chinese flag on the lawn of Washington, D.C., 2009. Complete stand down on Huawei coming in to Plano, Texas. Thank you, Rick Perry, working with Donald Trump. And then we have the Donald Trump Saudi Arabia connection. And so when we look at the human trafficking potential, I look at the direction of Saudi Arabia. I look at cartel groups on the West Coast, potentially at some point, if they're not already, Working with the Chinese military or the PLA, People's Liberation Army, I think Los Angeles will be ground zero for something. And I think that this is something that our government knows and may allow. And it's something that China is preparing for. Look at all the stories that have already come out about Chinese submarines and Russian submarines coming close to the United States. A little test, see how far they can get. Dry runs, PayPal going down. DYN or DYS server attacks, dry run, test, 
test, okay, it works, functions, test, test. And meanwhile, China that makes our computers has the ability to switch off our computers, as well as it came out five years ago, six years ago. The ability to hack our robot army that we're building, what DARPA has been working on, and all that same stuff, by the way, Terminator cyborgs, it's all being developed by Russia. Not to mention, all these countries still have active remote viewing programs. What I'm providing for you is a grassroots intelligence uh, analysis and forecast on what I think we're heading towards. You know, you can have all the positive thoughts you want. The bad is already in motion. Okay. And they have all these distractions, all these distractions. Look over here, left versus right, right versus left. And you're not seeing either group, the anti-Trump protesters nor the Trump supporters, talk about where this is really going. In fact, on the anti-Trump movement, you have a lot of uh, counterfeit grievances, disingenuous activists being led by the media. But at the end of the day, politicians and the media are working close in hand, glove in hand. The media is not really going after Donald Trump. Their criticism of Donald Trump... And, Kelly Conway, her, her feet on the couch. Oh, another supposed hot mic. See, this is all material built perfectly for Saturday Night Live. Throw in another couple of tweets from Donald Trump. It's a friggin' joke. And it's meant to be a joke. The next few years are years that we all need to work very diligently to educate others about what's going on. Well, what's the purpose of educating others? I've been asked also, very confrontationally by some people. Why well, get into this stuff? If you can educate people around the world, people of China, people of Russia, people here in the United States, people in Europe, and show how Rumsfeld armed North Korea. Okay. Show the missile technology transfer documents, Bill Clinton, China. Show, and we're going to have more information in the future, Donald Trump's international connections while they prepare for war. Document all these things that happened during the Obama administration to help China and help Russia. And see, there's so much spin out there that most people don't look and go, oh my God, it's the same world order. These are nations that funded U.S. imperialism. And now the U.S. is about to go to blows with the very countries that it's borrowed money from, that are holding U.S. debt. And they make the announcement last year about sending women to the front lines. When this happens, I think it's more than likely that we're going to have a lot of troops in the Middle East that won't be here. To provide a defensive posture. I think when they come, they're going to walk right in. And there's going to be a mad dash, at least in the West Coast, east. And a lot of these people will be going on foot because they won't be able to get out by freeway. And you're going to see similar things on the East Coast. And people that don't have protection and or people that have as unpopular as this is to hear, have accrued a lot of uh, negative karma, they may find themselves targets. And this is the real reason why they're teaching some Americans to hate with all their heart. It's not by accident. It's entrapment. We have a couple of years. And then it gets real. So you can help me by helping others. You can help me help others by subscribing to outsidethebox.vhx.tv because anything that I put out on YouTube, foreign troop drills, China threat, Russia threat, it's demonetized just like that. And so this is a whole new thing for me to be producing a new series of videos for my all-new on-demand channel because some of the stuff is just too hot to handle.
but I believe it needs to be spoken, and I believe that history will look back on video vlogs like this. I'm Alex Answering, thanking you for watching. It is March 4th, 2017.